Hi, my name is Shelton. Today I'm excited to talk to you about the evolution of our heart rate technology and to give you a deeper look at our most advanced heart rate technology yet and how it helps us stay healthy. I joined Fitbit when the company first started back in 2007 and come from a background in surgical robotics. My research was in heart surgery. I was drawn to that area because I'd seen firsthand the negative impact of cardiovascular disease in my father's life. I was and continue to be inspired by the idea that we can help people better understand their heart health and make behavior changes that can hopefully keep them from developing serious conditions in the future. Even during the early days of Fitbit, the team was focused on bringing heart rate technology to the wrist. When I say it now, it sounds like a no-brainer, but at that time, it simply had not been done. In 2014, we pioneered continuous heart rate tracking on the wrist with our Pure Pulse technology, which uses photoplethysmography, or PPG, to monitor the tiny blood volume fluctuations in the wrist as the heart beats. We measure heart rate by shining light into the capillary bed in the back of the wrist and digitizing the amount of light that's reflected back to the sensor. The resulting oscillations in the data correspond to heart rate. This was a significant engineering challenge because using lights continuously for five plus days straight can take a lot of energy if you're not careful. And wearable devices don't have a lot of room for a battery. It was also a significant scientific challenge because extracting heart rate from PPG during exercise has to take into account the motion noise that the sensor sees as the arms move. This technology is the foundation for so many of the features that we have today that give our users deeper insights about their bodies, like cardio fitness level, sleep stages, sleep score, SpO2, active zone minute, and most recently ECG. As we've evolved, so has our heart rate technology, both the hardware sensors and the software algorithms. PurePulse is an incredible innovation, and we've consistently made it better through miniaturization, increased accuracy, and battery efficiency. In the Fitbit Sense and Versa 3, we introduce a new multi-channel optical sensor that increases the number of light transmitters and light receivers in our heart rate monitor. This gives us six independent optical interrogation channels across a larger surface area on the wrist and yields an average signal-to-noise ratio increase of 56% during running exercises. This data goes into a new machine-learned algorithm that gives us our most accurate heart rate system for running yet. Over the last six years, and with the vast amount of heart rate data we've collected, our researchers have learned how to model the dynamics of human heart rate and how to recognize the unique signature of heart rate in PPG data. We've used this knowledge to design real-time machine learning algorithms that extract heart rate signals so small that even our own researchers can't spot them. With the Fitbit Sense and Versa 3, we have our most advanced heart rate technology. Using the new multi-channel optical sensor and a new machine learning algorithm that's being tested in the Fitbit Heart Study, the sensor can be used to assess your heart rhythm for signs of atrial fibrillation from your wrist. And with the ECG-enabled Fitbit Sense and a compatible ECG app available in select markets, you can also do an AFib spot check. It's the very first Fitbit device with this capability, and I think it's aptly named Sense because roughly one third of the touchable surface of the device is devoted to physiological sensing, be it from the stainless steel electrodes on the front and back or the optical sensors beneath. Now I'll turn it over to my colleague, Dr. Tony Faranish, to talk a little bit more about AFib. Thanks, Shelton. Hi, everyone. My name is Tony. My job is to develop ways to use our technology to help detect and manage disease. This year, Fitbit started one of the most exciting projects in our history, the Fitbit Heart Study. It is our first large-scale and entirely virtual study to validate an algorithm to identify AFib available to users in the U.S. So far, the study has enrolled more than 300,000 people in just three months. AFib affects 33.5 million people around the world. And by detecting it early, we have the potential to change the course of the disease and reduce risk of the most serious outcome, which is stroke. Normally, your heart beats in a regular rhythm, like a metronome, with some natural variability. AFib is an electrical problem in the heart where the upper chambers, called the atria, beat erratically, which causes the heart to beat in an irregular rhythm. Sometimes, people are symptomatic and may feel like their heart is racing in their chest, fatigued, or breathless. Oftentimes, people are asymptomatic, and according to some studies, a quarter of people only find out they have AFib after they have had a stroke. That's the tricky part of AFib. It can come and go, it's not consistent. The optimal way to identify AFib through heart rate tracking technology is to screen when the body is at rest, making overnight assessment while people sleep ideal for detection. This makes Fitbit devices well-suited for detection as they are there with you 24 seven, 
even while you are sleeping. This is why we are exploring two paths to AFib detection to help best meet the needs of our users by providing both continuous tracking along with a spot check approach. The first is through our PPG technology Jelton just spoke about. The Fitbit Heart Study uses our PPG sensor to measure the heart's beat-to-beat -beat timing, which is crucial for identifying AFib. It is a light-based technology that measures small changes in blood volume to capture heart rate measurements from your wrist. This sensor runs continuously in the background and may help identify intermittent AFib. The second is through ECG. We also developed ECG technology so you can take a spot check heart rhythm reading. This tool is for those who want to assess themselves in the moment and review the reading later with their doctor. I'm thrilled that we are helping make these innovations accessible to people around the world to help them improve their heart health. And with that, I'll hand it back to Shelton to tell us what's next for Fitbit and heart rate tracking. Thanks, Tony. As a scientist and researcher, there is still so much innovation to be unlocked by being able to study and understand the heart rate trends of millions of people around the world. One of the great things that has emerged is how all of this data has enabled us to look deeper into the body, even into the minutia of timing in the cardiovascular system, like heart rate variability and other metrics. We'll continue to explore how we can use our heart rate technology and evaluate other metrics to help identify heart conditions beyond AFib. For example, pulse arrival time, the short time between when the heart starts to beat and when blood actually gets to the wrist, is another measurement that has incredible potential to help identify heart disease. A reduced pulse arrival time might indicate that your blood vessels are getting stiffer, which could be an indication of heart disease or high blood pressure. A related analogy would be like putting your thumb over the opening of a hose. The pressure increases and the water flows faster through the opening. Scientists have been studying pulse arrival time for decades and have shown tantalizing glimpses of what might be possible links to stress and cardiovascular health. We're researching this metric and hope to do a natural experiment to help generate the largest data set ever created on pulse arrival time and this may help unlock its potential. These are areas we'll continue to explore with the goal of helping to find ways to make the information useful and actionable for our users in the future.